Alabama cooking, we're making a key lime pound cake. Honey, I love me a pound cake because they are forgiving. Those are the cakes for people who are not bakers, but you wanna make a good cake anyway, baby, make you a pound cake. And this one is gonna be key lime and it's gonna be off the chizang. Come on in the kitchen, guys, let's cook. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna start with in a pound cake, basics. We're gonna always start creaming our butter and our sugar. Lots of sugar goes in a pound cake because that's just what happens, okay? And also, it's a lime cake, and lime is very key lime. It's tart, okay? So, you know, sweet tart, you know, okay. Anyway, moving right along. We've also got eggs. We've got some lime zest. We've got a little bit of vegetable oil we're gonna put in there. Vanilla, key lime juice, some buttermilk, mm-hmm. Smidge of salt and our cake flour. Let's get started creaming our butter and sugar. Now you wanna make sure that your butter is really soft. I wanna show you this. Do you see how soft that butter is? I'm hoping you can see that. I left this butter sitting out for hours, okay? There's all kinds of ways you can do it. Some people put it in the microwave and let it soften up. But if I'm honest with you guys, the best way to get your butter like you want it, let it sit out for hours. I actually will put butter out the night before for a cake I plan to make the next day. That's just how I do. All right, let's cream it. As those cream together, we're gonna add in our little bit of vegetable oil, just a few tablespoons. Oil is really nice for the texture of cakes, and by using oil and butter, we're gonna get a very nice crumb on this cake. Look at that. Ooh, looking pretty already. <laughs> yeah, why do I stay excited? I'm just going around the sides. You can turn it off to push these things down if you need to, but I guess I've been doing this too long. This has kind of become one of my <laughs> preferred methods, just sticking it in there while it goes. All right, and by that butter being so soft, it's ready to go. Now we're gonna start with our eggs. We have six eggs because pound cakes need eggs, I'm just telling you. Now, when you add eggs to a cake, add them one at a time, and you want each egg to be incorporated in your batter before you add the next one. So you see how that one's in? And now to the next one. And I always recommend cracking them and putting them in a bowl because it's easy to lose a shell or anything. I know people say, I never lose eggshells. Yes, you do. You do. It's okay. Sometimes the death is me. That's why you do it in a separate bowl. Look at that. Incorporated. One more. I think pound cakes are one of my favorite things to bake. I really do. Hey, I'm telling you, they are really forgiving. If you put a little too much sugar in a pound cake, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. Next egg, number three. Now I'm gonna eventually stop this and pull the sides. <laughs> eventually I'm gonna stop this and uh, go around the sides of the bowl, but I'm just trying to get these eggs in there one good time first. Number five. And last, number six, all right. So our eggs are in there. Gonna let that get everything going. Now I'm just gonna take a quick break. Go in and just pull down what's on the sides. You wanna make sure if you're using a stand mixer that you're going around these sides and getting everything off the sides and back into the mixer because you want everything to mix up, see? Oh, that's the oven ready for the cake. I'm preheating to 325. Okay, now I'm gonna continue mixing this, but I'm gonna start adding my other things. So I'm gonna add some vanilla, okay? And here is the magic, the star of the show, the key lime juice. Now you might think that's not a lot. You don't need a lot. Key lime juice is really, really strong and powerful. And it tastes really good. It's just, it's super, super tart when you taste it directly. That's why you need a lot of sugar in these. This is gonna be good. All right, I've also got the zest of one lime. See, here's my poor zested lime. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna put this in last. Now we're gonna start to add in our buttermilk and our cake flour, okay? Now you'll notice as it mixes up, it starts to look slightly curdled. The reason it looks like that is because of the acidity in the lime juice. That's okay, it's gonna smooth out, just want you to know. All right, so we're gonna put in here three cups of flour 
and get this set up so I can show you the best way to get flour into your cakes. And you're thinking, you just put it in, right? Well, I mean, technically, but I wanna show you how you're supposed to do it, okay? All right. You wanna alternate between your flour and your milk. How you wanna get your flour in, okay, is you wanna spoon it in. See how I'm doing that? I'm spooning it in. Okay, see, just like so. I'm not patting it down. I'm just putting it in and kind of shaking it to even it out. You wanna go a little higher than you need. Okay, level it off. Shake it in. I turn the spoon over and just level it off. Okay, you're gonna do three cups of flour and two cups of, I mean, one cup of the buttermilk that you're gonna alternate putting them in. So we're gonna start with one cup of flour. Okay, we're gonna mix this with slowly. There we go. I'm gonna get my next cup ready while that one gets incorporated. While we're mixing this in, I'm gonna take a moment and explain cake flour to you. Because sometimes people say, what exactly is cake flour? Well, flour has protein in it, and the protein in flour is what determines how uh, much gluten is in your, your cake or your bread product, and the amount of gluten determines how firm it is. So in breads, you have really structured loaves. Those have quite a bit of gluten in them, and they use bread flour, which has a lot of protein. Cake flour has a lower amount of protein, so your cake holds together, but you don't want it to be a loaf of bread. It's cake. All right, see here? Now I'm gonna mix in some of this buttermilk. And you guys, this is homemade buttermilk. I know, I'm always doing the most. <laughs> that just means it's one cup of milk mixed with about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of vinegar. You let it sit, it will thicken up, and that's buttermilk, okay? All right, I'm gonna turn it off. Mix in my second cup of flour. I should have stuck the mixer on a different side. There we go. <laughs> Next cup of flour. Slowly incorporate that, okay? And get my third cup of flour ready. The reason you wanna scoop in your flour like this when you're making a cake is because you get air in flour and it settles differently. So when you go to think you're picking up a cup just straight out, it might not quite be a cup. You gotta level it off. So it's best if you just go in with your spoon, scoop it out. That's also why I like to keep a nice wide um, canister for my flour. It's wide enough that I can just be right over it. There. Okay, that's my third cup. I've got two in there now. I'm gonna add in this buttermilk, the rest of it. Oops, got a little drop over there, that's okay. Going slowly, you don't wanna over mix your cake. The longer you mix it, or fast and keep going, keep going, it's gonna develop more gluten and it's gonna make your cake more dense than you want it to be. So you just wanna get it mixed in there and then move on, honey. All right, now we're gonna add in our third and final cup of flour. Cake flour, that is. <laughs> Okay. Now, if you don't have cake flour, you can use all-purpose flour as well. You just want to use something like baking powder as well in there because that will help it rise. By using, um, I like using cake flour alone. I don't add generally add extra baking powder to my cakes because they rise fine. Make sure you add a pinch of salt to this as well. Salt brings out those flavors. Just a pinch. I probably should have put it in there earlier, but I forgot. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to start scraping the sides down. See here. We'll scrape these sides down so the rest of this flour around these sides gets incorporated into this cake batter. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh, I can't wait to taste it. Do y'all like cake batter? I can't be the only one. <laughs> My daughter's with me while I'm taping this and I'm like, do y'all like cake batter? She's like, no, oh, cake batter. <laughs> okay, we're gonna also add in the zest of our lime. Mm. Well, doesn't that look, look how bright and pretty that is. Oh. I love key lime. <laughs> now let's give this a nice mix. Get everything together. Oh. And when you're zesting and getting the, the zest of your lime, make sure that you use a thin zester, really small. Because if you don't, you end up with these big strips. 
you know, and that's not fun to eat. Real zest done properly and small are just little flecks of attention added to your cake's flavor. Is that cool, y'all? All right, let's taste the batter first. I always taste my cake batter, just a little bit. I mean, my grandma used to say, oh snap, that's good. Oh my God. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, lick my fingers, I'm at home. I'm cooking at home. That's what you do when you cook at home. I'm not selling this cake. And since I'm not selling it, I can lick my fingers. Y'all get mad? Well, most of you won't get mad. There's gonna be one person that says, Ugh, she licked her fingers. I am at home. You see this? This is my house. I'm at home. Anyway, now, in a perfect world, you should get all of the batter off of this right here. But I'm a good mommy, and I know my children, and they will come running for these. So I like to preserve them with care so I can keep getting my Mommy of the Year awards. All right, I've got a butt pan here that has been sprayed with baking spray. I'm giving this one last good stir just to make sure we've incorporated everything from the top to the bottom. I would say from the rooter to the tutor, but that might not go over like a minute. All right, we're gonna pour this in. Go around, around. Take your time, don't rush the process. Good food takes time and attention. That doesn't mean it takes all day. It just means it takes time and attention, meaning you need to pay attention and give yourself time to do it properly. Don't rush through the steps that need attention and time, okay? Don't just dump the stuff in there and say, I'm gonna shake it up. Don't do that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See there? Now this might be a little too much batter for this cake pan, because it's going to rise. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, let me go a little more because it's gonna rise. So if I go too high, I'm gonna end up with a cake. And exactly what would be wrong with that? Okay, just a little bit more. <laughs> Y'all, I'm gonna take this last little bit here and I have a little mini lump pan. I think I'm gonna put it, oh, it's not enough to do it. We gonna figure out something to do with it, but this looks so good. You see the little light green specks in there from those, the lime zest? Ah, so excited. All right, guys, we're gonna put this in the oven. It's gonna bake for about an hour and 15 minutes at least maybe up to an hour 20, depends on your oven, how hot your oven gets, but keep an eye on it. You wanna go to about, it'll probably no more than, it shouldn't take more than an hour and 25. Give it a All right, let's get this baby in the oven. Well guys, our cake has been in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes, and I want you to see something. I always use a toothpick or a knife if that's all you have. You wanna stick it in, and it should come out nice and clean. That's how you know your cake is done. So I've let this sit here for about 10, 15 minutes or so to cool off initially. I always use cake crumbs. You can order these at Amazon. It just gives you a nice base to put your cake on. Put it right there. And the moment of truth. Still a little warm, even though it's been 10 minutes. I could probably do it without this, but with my luck, I would go to do it and burn my hands and have everybody see it. All right. Okay. Wish me luck, y'all. Go and voila, that's a pretty cake. Look at that, oh yeah. Now we wanna let this cake finish cooling completely before we put our icing on it because if we don't, we're gonna use a powder sugar type icing. If we just put it on here while the cake is hot like this, it's just gonna melt. So let's let the cake cool completely and then we will put the icing on. Oh, it's key lime cake day. Okay, well, our cake has cooled down fully. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to get into it, but we're gonna make this really quick drizzle icing for it. So here I've got a couple cups of powdered sugar to start with, okay? Now I'm gonna primarily use key lime juice in here. And I'm gonna start with just a few tablespoons and slowly mix it up. I've also got a little bit of milk here that I'm gonna use, and the reason I'm gonna use a little milk is Honestly, it's just to kind of tame the flavor of the key lime a little bit, because if we just use only key lime and the sugar, which we can, you can if you really like that flavor, the sugar will tone it some, but if it's a little much for you and yours, what you can do is add a little milk to it, okay? Now, when you make these icings, what's so cool about them <laughs> is they're just kind of adjust as you go, okay? Now I have that milk to put on there if I need to to tame the flavor. Let me taste it. Let's see. Oh, that's so good. 
Oh man, I'm not good. Okay, I'm gonna put one drop of milk in only because I told the kids I would. There, that's it. <laughs> like they wouldn't eat cake, right? Now you see how thick this is right now? I like that. I wanna thicken it just a little bit because I really want it to sit on the cake. So I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar. This is about a half a cup I'm putting in here extra. And slowly, don't go crazy stirring right away, because if you do, it's gonna go shh. Powdered sugar can make a mess, people. There we go. Oh yeah, see that? I like that. Yes, yes! That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't that look good? See how that's falling? Now, I wanna do a little tem Oh, I almost forgot the vanilla, y'all. Just a smidge. I'm just gonna put just about, about a teaspoon of vanilla in there. It doesn't need a ton, it just helps the flavors to come out. Actually, I found that vanilla gives the flavors a nice backdrop, okay? Here we go. That's pretty. I mean, I just like looking at the icing. Let's get one more taste just to make sure. Oh yeah. Mother of the warden here, right here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna shake that excess off. Is it? Put that right here. And I did this in this big old measuring cup because I wanna pour it. And you see how thick it is? Now when I start pouring this, if it's not as thick as I want it, I'm gonna stop and add some more powdered sugar to it. You see that? gonna drip that's okay but you see how nice and thick that is how that's laying on there that's what you want in a cake <laughs> and because it's cool it's gonna hold and let me tell you the good part y'all right in the middle of the cake you get that well that little icing well oh man all right I'm gonna take a picture a slice of it for the picture but honestly, y'all, I don't know. Let me take a slice of the picture. Oh, I can make a mess in here. Good thing I got kids, right? No, <laughs> I gotta clean that up. Oops, no, I'll clean it up. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is. This cake looks absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to dig in and enjoy it. I... <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for this cake. All right, guys, I'll see you next time right here for more Calabama cooking. Be sure you join me again and tell a friend. Happy cooking.